Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here one more time, I hope. I can go to bed after this. Anyway, this is going to be Psalms chapter 1, followed by Pat's Two Cents. Verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I'm going to read verse 5 again with Pat's slant on it, kind of a Pat's paraphrase, because I want you to hear what it really means. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. It's like you won't have a leg to stand on, baby. It's over. Second part, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The congregation is not a church congregation. Nor sinners in the gathering of the righteous. You ever eat a piece of fruit? A piece of watermelon? Uh, um, let me see what else has those little uh, 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 oranges. You're eating and this little pit gets in your mouth. And, you know, you're chewing and in this pit, you want the fruit. You don't want the pit. So you, you spit it out. You find a bag or tissue or whatever. And you get rid of the pit. <laughs> you want the fruit. Well, that's what God wants from us. He wants fruit. He wants the fruit of his Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering, mercy, gentleness, meekness, uh, uh, temperance, which is self-control. I mean, we really don't realize that God is not going. We really kind of take him for granted because he's merciful. And we live in a dispensation of grace. And we think, well, that means I can do what I want to do. And But God understands, you see. You know, you know, the man upstairs, he understands. No. He understands. But that doesn't give you a free ticket. See, even though the gift is free, we have to utilize the gift, the way it was given to us. Now, if I give you a hammer, listen, if I give you a hammer and you take the hammer and you use it as a paperweight, that is a waste in my opinion because I did not give you the hammer to use as a paperweight. I gave you the hammer so that you could nail those things in the wall you need to Nail so you can hang what you need to hang on the wall. Or else I would not have given you the hammer. I would have given you a paperweight. So when you misuse something. When you repurpose what God gives you. You really are putting yourself in a precarious position. Because God did not give you his mercy. He did not give you his son. To die on the cross for your sins. For you to sin. And do what you want to do. He didn't do it. That was too high a price to pay. Those 30 some odd stripes on his back. 
where their skin was ripped open just like they did slaves. That was not so you can tinker and trifle with his mercy. That's not what that was for. So when he says that you shall not stand in the judgment, that's bad news. And sinners in the congregation of the righteous, it's like the pit that gets spit out. <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah, what are you doing here? So when you see that, it behooves you to get it together now. If, if, now I'm a talk street, so I hope that you saints aren't offended because sometimes you got to say it like it is for some folks to hear what you're really saying. You can't be religious and, and, um, and tiptoe through the tulips with these nice little Christian phrases and these nice little church sayings. You got to call a spade a spade. You men, you can't get control of what you would call that Peter of yours. Zip it. Pray over it. Get your life together with God. You can't do this outside of God's help. So when you give your heart to the Lord, ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. That is the only power you will have over your Peter and everything else in your life that's not godly. You women. Ask God to give you control over your desires, over your words, over your actions. Because you have to give your heart to the Lord and be filled with the Holy Spirit too. Women don't get a, a free ticket. Your gender does not get you over. It's Jesus Christ, him crucified, him resurrected from the grave, and you being filled with the Holy Spirit. And cooperating with them. That's going to get you over. Not lip service. I mean I've heard people do lip service. Hey man. What's up? Yeah. You got it. You know. You the man. Yeah. I'm the man. You the man too. Yeah. All right. Ain't nothing but a bunch of bull. Y'all ain't said nothing. You just buttering each other up. So if you ever need anything from each other. You might get a favor. Or a dollar. Or a ride. It ain't about nothing. Lip service. Well, listen. God recognizes lip service. That's why he tells all of us when we intermingle with each other. We're not to judge, but we are. We're not to judge each other and, and write each other off. No. But we are to watch each other's fruit. Jesus said, we will know them by the fruit they bear. Are you bearing fruit? Fruits of righteousness, love, joy, peace, understanding, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control, tenderness, compassion. You can't go wrong with those. But lust and anger and strife and frustration and jealousy, malice, resentment, revenge, uh, violence, murder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you're already wrong just by stepping on that turf. So you cannot go in. On judgment day, you won't have a leg to stand on if you are not walking on legs of righteousness while you're here in the land of the living. You can't walk on legs of sin and tiptoe in every little, uh, uh, can't think of the word. <laughs> you can't tiptoe into every little area of mischief. That you think you can get away with. And then think when it's time for God to come. All you got to do is say. Jesus. Uh uh baby. It doesn't work like that. Sorry Charlie. Okay. 
I think I have flapped my jibs enough. I hope you heard me. I hope that you heard what the Spirit of God is saying. Those of you who are in church, who are worship leaders, who are pastors, who are pastors' wives, who are children of pastors, who are ushers in the church, you who are greeters, Whatever your position may be, ministers of music, Lord it all. It ain't worth a hill of beans, y'all. I don't care how much you get them up there jumping and shouting. It ain't worth a hill of beans. And I don't care how many people are led by the Lord on your behalf. Because you did something. Somebody gave their heart to the Lord. Guess what? The Spirit is what draws them. You may have been the conduit, but the Spirit of God doesn't need your help. So if you think that that has bought you some pretty good brownie points, whoops, sorry. Anyway, think about it. Ask God to help you not only repent verbally, but repent through your fruits of righteousness. Do a 180 degree turn. Cut that woman loose. Cut that mess loose. You know what your mess is. Cut that mess loose. God, I'm going to say it streetwise. God don't play. Homie don't play that. God bless you.